Hello everybody and good morning. My name is Brad Robbins from Adobe and we are here day three of Adobe Summit back in the think tank. And I have alongside me today, Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst at Futurum Research. Daniel, thanks for joining us this morning. Brad, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited, last day here, last, last day. day of the event and I get to be the first up here in the think tank. Well, we're excited to have you, and, and you've been with us all week long, starting all the way back to Monday at our think tank event, and then of course all the way through today. Tell us a little bit, first of all, about yourself and about your organization and what you do. Yeah, so my name is Daniel Newman, and if you haven't followed along or seen the other couple times I've been in the think tank, I'm the principal analyst at Futurum Research, and I am the CEO of Broadsuite Media Group. I write for Forbes and I'm a five-time best-selling author and my focus is about digital transformation, experience economy, and innovation, disruption, and all those other great buzzwords that businesses are facing today. And I'm hoping just to give them a little light on how to take their businesses forward with so much technological and, ch and digital change. Well, fantastic. We're looking forward to getting into that. But before we do, as I mentioned, we're here live at Adobe Summit, uh, wrapping things up today. Curious to get your thoughts, high-level insights and takeaways of, of the, the macro topic and theme of the week, which is all around experience business. Can you share some, some thoughts with us on that? Yeah, I think this movement is so important. So many companies invest in technology, and you guys launched your you know, experience cloud this week and you know, changed, shifted up the marketing, but what really is behind that is the story, is that companies have agreed they're going to be competing on experiences. And this means they need to be investing in the technology that can support that. However, one of my big takeaways this week is that it doesn't start with the technology. It starts by understanding your customer's needs. And the technology can also help with that. And when you really understand what your customers want and what your customers need, that's when delivering the best experiences truly becomes possible. Shifting just a little bit, you recently wrote in a Forbes article uh, on the digital transformation of retail. What are some of the tech advances in that particular industry that are creating meaningful customer experiences? Well, we've all seen just how much disruption that industry is facing. Just this week, Sears wrote a letter to its shareholders saying they don't know if they're going to be able to stay in business. Sears, an absolute, one of the biggest legacy brands in retail. Now, no matter whether you've been there in the last 20 years or in the last six months, when you hear companies, iconic companies like that going away, you go, oh my gosh, things are changing in a big way. So, now we're seeing companies like Amazon coming to market and actually going back into brick and mortar retail with their Go stores. And what they've done is they've implemented IoT and sensor data to give people this seamless shopping experience where they can literally walk into a small store, grab all the stuff they want off the shelf, and it uses all the, that type of data and mobile payment where you just literally put it in your bag and walk out. And it will charge you, it's, it's a huge security raise, it's an experience raise, and they're using everything from, you know, AR and IOT and sensors and big data to mobile payment to create just a new seamless thought on, on, on the way people shop. And you know, just one more point on this is there, we're going to see a movement, as much as everybody's doing e-commerce, people still want to run out and buy stuff. And that's why you're seeing a company that's growing in billions of dollars online going back into retail. And I actually think with all this disruption, it's an opportunity for new companies who maybe had almost an entirely digital presence to get back into the brick and mortar once again. Well, you mentioned Amazon. One thing that they've done recently that I've just found to be fascinating is, is the introduction of, of the little buttons. It's like you push a button and it reorders a particular product or whatnot. So speaking of automation, in the age of automation, what can other brands do to improve the customer experience and make it more seamless? Well, I think there, there are habits and behaviors that customers have that you can track with data and that can simplify how people buy. So in a think tank a year ago, not the one I was in, but one of the predictions was a certain percentage, I think it was like 15% of all purchases are gonna happen without any human interaction. And I love that prediction. And what I really liked most about it was there are certain staples in our lives, you know, laundry detergent, the milk, you know, in our house. Um, that we don't necessarily need to go out and buy, but when we run out, they know we need more. And I think it's, it's, just, it's like a microcosm <clears throat> of experience that it basically says, here's your behavior, here's your habit. The data says, would you be happier if we just got you that fresh jug of milk one day before you run out? Because on average, it takes you 3.4 days. So that's like a great example of how technology, data, automation can basically put the products in our hands before we even 
totally know we need them. And that's just, a, like I said, a really small example of what an experienced business can do is say, we know your problems better than you do. We know what you need before you do, and we're going to fulfill it for you before you ask for it. And that also changes one more thing. People, just data and privacy, they freak out about giving it away. But when the experience truly makes your life better, nobody complains about the data. I think it was Henry Ford who said, if I had asked the customer what they wanted, they would have said a faster horse. Right, so, and then all of a sudden comes the automobile. So, let's, speaking of, of sensors and, and IoT and, and some futuristic things, let's look into our crystal ball for a minute. And, and I want to know, where does Daniel Newman see the customer experience of tomorrow five years from now? Yeah, you know, that's a really good question because it's, there's so many different ways it can go. Personalization is a word that can be extremely polarizing to the marketer and extremely unique to the consumer. And what I mean by that is a lot of marketers think personalization maybe is too hyped. In fact, we went through that, that actual discussion at the Think Tank on Monday. Um, but for a customer, there's no experience that is too good when it feels like it's tailored for you. I always think about when you're walking through the lines at Disney and, and they're just feeding you exact precise content off the magic band because they have so much information and data and they know what you like and where you've gone and what you've done. And people love that, they eat it up. That's why they pay more money to go travel all the way to Orlando to ride on a ride that maybe isn't as good as, the, as, as a different theme park that might be right down the street from them. It's that entire personalized experience. So my feeling is that every business has something unique that is their optimal experience. And so it comes down to what type of tools can we invest in that gives us that holistic view of our customers, the data. You know, we talk about AI and, and cognitive computing and machine learning and what it can do for your company, but I always say start first and say, what is the journey that your customer finds best? And that's a combination of the qualitative data you get from a customer and the quantitative data that you can get through using systems and tools and then putting those into the customer experience that you create. So we've talked a lot all week long about the importance of customer experience and leveraging tools within our, our data and, and delivery and design and whatnot, but can you give a few words of advice to, to those watching and those who will watch this about how to, how, to, how to make it happen? How do you jump into the age of automation, and automation to create an experience that truly ignites customer loyalty? Yeah, so every, as I was saying, every business is unique. So there isn't like a one thing you must do. But what I always say is start by focusing on maybe one thing to your business is extremely important. I've often said a lot of businesses, the 90% that say we want to we want to compete on experience. Well, let's start with something as simple as customer service, right? Using automation, using chat bots, for instance, as a tool, how much faster can you respond to a customer? The data has said that people, you know, it was over a third of people expect a response to any inquiry within 30 minutes. And I would say that that data, even from a few years ago, has become obsolete where now people really want on-demand response to any inquiry they have, no matter how important it is. So technology like a chatbot can easily help you take that to the next level. And then what happens is the people you've invested in, they don't go away, you bump them up the chain. So the chatbot can only do A, B, and C. But they can at least answer that basic question and give people the peace of mind that they're request is important, and that matters so much. So now you're tackling an issue of making your customers happier. And what you're also doing is you're giving a chance for the people who used to do that line of work to now raise up and maybe take on some more personal, more important questions on the company rather than being eliminated, which is one of the biggest fears that automation plays. But that's one focus to say, how do I create a wonderful customer service environment using automation? And for every company that may not be it, but it's like starting with one thing. So I always say start with that one thing that you think already makes your business great and see if you can't use automation to make it a little bit better. And the only other thing I recommend is don't run from data. Don't run from data and don't bias the data. Don't look for what you think in the data. Look at the data for what it is because it will tell you more of what you need to know than you can ever imagine. So don't be remiss, don't, you would be remiss not to invest in getting a platform that allows you to leverage data to get a much better understanding of your customers. Terrific, Daniel, fascinating insights, great takeaways, and as always, a pleasure to have you here in the tank. Uh, and thanks again for being a part of our Think Tank earlier this week. For those of you watching, if you'd like to hear more from Daniel, uh, they hosted, he and Brian Fanzo hosted Smack Talk Live here from the tank. 
and Daniel was a part of the Think Tank on Monday. You can check those videos out on the Adobe Experience Cloud Facebook page. Again, we're coming at you live from Adobe Summit in the Think Tank, day three in Las Vegas. And I'm al joined alongside by Daniel Newman, Principal Analyst of Futurum Research. Daniel, thank you again for joining. Brad, thank you very much. It's our pleasure, and stay tuned for more here at Adobe Summit.